We're going to do an infrastructure bill. We will build gleaming new roads, bridges, highways, railways, waterways, all across our beautiful land. Our greatest creations, our most incredible buildings, our most beautiful works of art are just waiting to be brought to life. American hands will build this future. American energy will power this future. We have become an energy exporter for the first time ever just recently. And American workers will bring this future to life. We are the nation that dug out the Panama Canal, won two world wars, put a man on the moon, and defeated communism. We can do anything. We can build anything. And we can dream anything. It's time to remember what our brave soldiers never forgot. Americans share one flag, one home, and one glorious destiny. We live according to the same law, raise our children by the same values, and we are all made by the same almighty God. As long as we remember these truths, as long as we have enough strength and courage in our souls, then there is no challenge too great, no task too large, no dream beyond our reach. We are Americans, and the future belongs to us. The future belongs to all of you. This is our moment. This is our chance. This is our opportunity to recapture our dynasty like never before, to rebuild our future, to deliver justice for every forgotten man and woman and child in America. Freedom will prevail. Our values will endure. Our citizens will prosper. Arizona will thrive. And our beloved nation will succeed like never, ever before. So to Americans, young and old, near and far, in cities small and large, we say these words again tonight. We will make America strong again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Arizona. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what do you say to that? I'm just going to speak from the heart here. What we have witnessed was a total eclipse of the facts someone who came out on stage and lied directly to the American people and left things out that he said in an attempt to rewrite history, especially when it comes to Charlottesville. He's unhinged. It's embarrassing. And I don't mean for us, the media, because he went after us, but for the country. This is who we elected president of the United States, a man who is so pit petty that he has to go after people who he deems to be his enemy like an imaginary friend of a six-year-old. His speech was without thought. It was without reason. It was devoid of facts. It was devoid of wisdom. There was no gravitas. There was no sanity there. He was like a child blaming a sibling on something else. He did it. I didn't do it. He certainly opened up the race wound from Charlottesville, a man clearly wounded by the rational people who are abandoning him in droves, meaning those business people, and the people in Washington now who are questioning his fitness for office and whether he is stable. A man backed into a corner, it seems, by circumstances beyond his control and beyond his understanding. That's the truth. 
if you watch that speech as an American, you had to be thinking, what in the world is going on? This is the person we elected as a president of the United States? This petty? This small? The person who's supposed to pull the country together? Certainly didn't happen there. Let's break it all down now. CNN political director David Chalian is here, political analyst April Ryan, political commentator Scott Jennings and Bakari Sellers, political contributor Maria Cardona, Republican strategist Rick Wilson. David, what did you think? Well, I thought that that, that was a president totally unhinged. I, there's uh, little doubt about that uh, for anyone watching. I, I, I do think you get at a point. This is, this is the evidence that backs up Bob Corker questioning his stability for office. This is the evidence as to why Susan Collins, another Republican senator, uh, isn't so sure he may be around to run for re-election uh, in 2020. This is evidence as to why the Republican leader in the United States, and again, I'm only referring to people from his own party in case people think uh, this is a a partisan political issue. It's not. Why Mitch McConnell, the leader of his own party, is telling people and associates, as we learned from the New York Times tonight, that he's not sure this presidency is going to uh, sort of fill out the duration of the term, uh, questioning whether or not this presidency is permanently off course. This is the evidence that it is so severely off course, you can't see the course. It's hard to see how he's going to get back on. And the fact that the president of the United States came out tonight, and again, as you said, it's not about attacking us. I, that's fine. I, I, although we in the press are going to be the last people to take lessons from Donald Trump on truth telling and facts. who has lied over a but, thousand times but, since he's taken office. Because that's on. absurd. But the fact that this is one night after he appealed to the country about unity, about coming together, about peace and love. These were the words he used last night at the top of his speech before he got to the Afghanistan section because he was still trying to do some cleanup on Charlottesville and really tried to talk about the notion of love and peace and unity. And this was nothing but a speech of division tonight. Mm -hmm. He has, I think he's sort of thrown up his hands and decided that the job he was actually elected to do is one that he does not at all seem interested in doing. He was more interested in getting the um, accolades from the crowd and from winning. He keeps going back to the election. And then, uh, as I said, lying about what he said to the American people regarding Charlottesville as if there is no videotape, as if these things are not on record, leaving out the many, many sides. And there's so many notes that I took here. After a while, I said, well, I mean, we'd have to be on air in order to fact check him for 10 more hours, which I'm sure other shows CNN will do throughout the evening and throughout the morning here on, you know, on the network. But it was just unbelievable watching. And again, we don't really care in the media. We, ex I, we expected him to go after us. People are wondering, April Wine, why did we run this? Because we want people to see their president. And they got a good glimpse of him now, as someone who is not widening the tent, a bigger tent, but shrinking his tent and shrieking the people who support him yeah. the, among the general public and certainly among those in Washington. What did you think, April? <laughs> Don, I, I was in disbelief, but mostly from the 44, 45, 46 minutes that he spent on Charlottesville. <clears throat> this is his fifth time. Last night, I was at Fort Myer with the president when he spoke to uh, the military servicemen uh, and service women about um, Afghanistan and again at the top he talked about Charlottesville but tonight tonight 44 minutes this is this is saying something that this is still weighing on him this is a huge issue and you said the word lie I don't like to use the word lie but you know I think back to when President Barack Obama was in the well of the house and what could uh, congressional leader jumped up and said you lie well you know if we say the word lie for this president, he's lying by omission because he omitted a lot of facts in his details, uh, his details about the layout of how he addressed the nation, what he said and what he did not say. He totally omitted the uh, alt-left issue. He totally omitted that he said um, he, he talked about both sides are at fault. You know, 
this president has a very different grasp of reality. But it's also interesting that he brought in Dr. Ben Carson to be on that stage. Um, also the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, Dr. Alveda King, he brought her in. Uh, she's Can you there, call her Bernice, you know, though, by accident? Faith. <laughs> Because Bernice King is Dr. tweeting on, King. yeah, Bernice uh, King is tweeting saying, "I'm not there tonight." Bernice King news. is the daughter of Dr. Yes. King, but this is this is the niece of Dr. Yeah. King, Alveda, Dr. Alveda King, and um, but it, it, he even he couldn't even say that the word Graham. He called him Grim. Um, I was like, wow. But here's and if you're going to have people on the stage, you want to get their names right. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. But. And it also comes at a time, I find it interesting, Armstrong Williams just last week in Martha's Vineyard, uh, last uh, Thursday, he denounced the words of this president. Uh, Armstrong Williams is very close to Dr. Ben Carson. So there's a lot going on here when it comes to this issue of Charlottesville. This issue of Charlottesville is the albatross around this administration's neck. They cannot divert away from it. It's just very bad. And then he went on, he talked about Twitter, he talked about us, but I'm looking at how deep Charlottesville is because he kept going on and on and what he omitted. He's trying to change history and history, like you said, we have the tapes, we have the transcripts and it lives in infamy on social media so people can see for themselves what he said it's not about fake media you can check it for yourself what yeah. the president actually well, said he is guilty by omission and if don if you want to say the word lie he lied by omission he lied tonight let's just flat out said say it he lied and he also painted himself as a he, listen, he lied he, yes he is he the president of the united states right and the president of the United mm -hmm. States, and he blamed is, Barack is Obama. Scrutin oh, of course he's going to blame Barack. He's got, he's got this thing for Barack yeah. Obama. He just can't get he's over it. Yeah, he's obsessed with Obama. He's obsessed with it. He, uh, it Hillary maybe. Clinton, Barack Obama, Barack Obama and must have Lynch. broken up with yeah. him. I don't know what happened, but what happened with him? But there's he is mad at him. <laughs> it's like a mad. He's mad at the bromance at him than, over, a, yeah. than a than yeah. an ex-wife. But what got me is that he painted himself as a victim, as the president of the United States, who's supposed to take the high road and set the example, when the only mm -hmm. victim in Charlottesville was Heather Heyer. Barely a mention of her name. Maybe he mentioned her once, didn't yeah. say her name. Um, but yeah. she is the victim in all of this. The President of the United States, Mr. President, you are not a victim here at all. Heather Heyer is the victim. The people who, he you, also, who you spoke out against Don, are victims. He, yeah. yeah, but he's now talking about all of this love. We did not hear the love during the campaign speeches. I did not hear love, this overarching yeah. theme of love. I heard more division and rhetoric to divide a nation. He now he's did, talking He almost love. did the same he thing realizes, tonight when he said that you're safer in here because we got bigger people, we can beat you up better. That was the insinuation, I'm paraphrasing. Rick Wilson, yeah. what, what did you think? And how, how did that person Look. get in here? I mean, if it's about love, everyone should be invited. This is not a private yeah. event anymore, or is it? That's he's, my He's got a thing know. with crowds. It's a lot of as well because he tonight lied tonight. about the size of the crowd and the protesters <laughs> outside. But Scott Jennings, give me your thoughts. Yeah. Rick Wilson, I'm sorry. Uh, Rick sure, Wilson, I, look, sorry, Rick, Rick, Rick. Yeah, go ahead, Rick. No, yeah. well, look, Don, listen, I mean, this, this, was, a, this, was, this was a Castro-esque speech in length. <laughs> it was in, an astounding chain of lies tied together by lunatic asides by a man who obviously is mentally unstable. I mean, I'm not joking about it or being a smart ass. This is a man who is not well. This is a man who is not qualified or mentally or morally fit to be the president of the United States. And tonight was one more proof of it. This is a guy who went back and tried to revise history and tried to and tried to elide the fact that he essentially um, you know, tonight he just happened to forget the many sides part of this. He happened to forget the, that the actual impact of the speeches he gave wasn't to reprimand or to or to, to chastise the alt-right and the Nazis and the anti-Semites and the Klan, but in fact to let them all nudge each other and elbow each other and go, hey, listen, he's still dog whistling. It's cool, guys. Keep up the fight. This is a guy who went out there tonight and behaved in a way, he, he alternated between being a whiny six-year-old who's had his Nintendo taken away and, and between being the cranky old man who's out there condemning everyone who doesn't yeah. worship him adequately. It was an astounding moment in our history. And, and I know the 25th Amendment is a remote possibility, but if people around him don't think that this guy is absolutely bat crap crazy, they are mistaken. Yeah, I want everybody to stand by. Well, I'm going to get your